if you're not getting your drugs or your pharmaceuticals from a reputable source, if you're not getting them from CVS or Rite Aid or Walgreens, if you're getting your drugs on the black market somehow, uh, beware because you might not know what's in those drugs. What is the big deal about the drug fentanyl and why should we care? I'm gonna talk about that in this video. Hey all, before I jump in, please do me a favor from this side of the camera. Please smash that like button on the way in, no matter how long you watch. Not everyone watches videos to their completion or to their ending. And also, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. That helps out with the channel's growth, its engagement, and it helps me out a lot as well. So, Dr. Dunbar, what's your interest in fentanyl? Well, for those of you who have been following me for a little while, those of you who have been subscribed to this channel for a while, you know that my background is in pharmacology. I, I am a graduate of the University of Michigan's Department of Pharmacology, or is it singular, the University of Michigan Department of Pharmacology, Michigan Pharmacology. So I have a background in drugs. So even though right now for my nine to five, I'm technically not working on drugs per se, I am working on xenobiotics and uh, what a particular class of xenobiotic is doing uh, in living systems. I still have an interest in drugs. I still have my background uh, in drugs and thus my ears are always uh, listening and, and keeping track of stories in the drug world. So in my periphery, I've heard the word fentanyl, 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 fentanyl overdoses, fentanyl, uh, a fentanyl, a fentanyl epidemic, deaths due to fentanyl. So I've been hearing about fentanyl for a while, but I haven't really taken a hard look at it. So a little while ago, I, I had a discussion with a mentor, a very, very close mentor, and we were talking about the state of the country and uh, things that are going on now, pressing issues that aren't being talked about in the most open way. And one of the things that he talked about was fentanyl and what's happening with fentanyl and how our population here in the United States is being impacted by fentanyl and another country which is likely in large part causing what's happening with uh, the fentanyl crisis in the United States. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to attempt to capture all of it in this one pre-record. So let's talk about fentanyl, what it is, its mechanism of action, and what's behind this crisis in the United States. So what is fentanyl? So as a pharmacologist slash toxicologist, one of the things that we like to see and one of the things that we, um, in our minds and when we're giving presentations, one of the key things that we use to identify chemicals are their structure. So this is the structure of fentanyl. So fentanyl is a uh, an opiate. So there are many, many classes of drugs. One of the more famous ones is the opiates. Uh, and fentanyl is an opiate used uh, for, uh, it's a pain medication. It's used for pain relief. I think it's an analgesic. Yeah, I think it would fall under 
and analgesic. Anesthetics put you to sleep. Analgesics make you feel better. So it masks pain. Um, I have written down here, I'm not sure whether it's a synthetic or naturally, well, it's gotta be a synthetic opiate uh, if it's a drug. And I'm gonna show in a second, or, or I'm gonna discuss shortly what some endogenous opiates are, meaning which ones, which are ones that the body naturally produces, but it's an opiate, it's a drug. Uh, other opiates include uh, codeine, uh, hydrocodone, oxycodone, oxymorphone, and the classic opiate uh, morphine. So I have some experience with uh, hydrocodone. It's either, hydroco it's either hydrocodone or oxycodone uh, because I have had uh, in my lifetime, two orthopedic surgeries. And I think for at least one of those, I was given a, uh, a generic for Vicodin. And if you remember, uh, those of you who follow sports, specifically professional football, you know that the legendary uh, Brett Favre, the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, for most of his career, he got addicted to Vicodin. So this stuff is very, very addictive once you start taking it. any of these drugs uh, and they make you feel better. They mask pain, but they also, at least in my instance, in addition to masking um, the post-surgery pain, they knock you out. They put you to sleep. So they're, they're a little bit, um, I'll say, depressive in terms of your biological function. So that's what fentanyl is. So all drugs, by nature of being drugs, they have a mechanism of action and they have a target. And I've talked about that in my previous content. So what is fentanyl's drug target? Well, it is the opioid receptor. So next, I will discuss the opioid receptor or receptors and what they are, and just a little bit about how they function in terms of biochemistry and cell biology and physiology. Now, before I discuss what the, um, the opioid receptors are and how they work, I, I think it's only appropriate and logical since I just discussed what the drugs are, uh, I think it's appropriate now to discuss what the endogenous uh, opioids are. So which substances, um, what are substances, what are chemicals that the body makes naturally that bind to these receptors? So I found three here. So there is a uh, beta endorphin, there is the met and lu and caffelins, and the uh, dynorphins. So many drugs, many drugs, what they do, and again, there are drug classes of all kinds, but what scientists do is they, they through physiology, through biochemistry, and through cell biology and other disciplines, uh, scientists research and characterize how the natural processes in the bodies and our bodies work. Uh, in every tissue and every cell type. That's what the, the long research grants at the University of Michigan and Stanford and Harvard, that's what they're working on in those research labs, among other things. They're trying to figure out how cells talk, how the enzymes work, uh, how cells signal to each other, how, how signaling takes place within the cells. And then drugs come from designing molecules or should I say drugs emerge from um, designing molecules to therapeutically modulate or inhibit those pathways. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the opioid receptors. So I did some research on where the opioid receptors are found. Uh, I wrote this down that uh, they're found in the cortex. I'm not sure if that meant, if that means the cerebral cortex, 
uh, the limbic system and the brainstem. And, but I also, if I recall correctly in my readings, I did see that it's, um, the receptors are expressed also to some degree in the peripheral nervous system. So you have the central nervous system and then you have the peripheral nervous system. And if, if any neuroscientists are, are out there watching that, please, I'm sorry, if any neuroscientists are out there watching this, please uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below and please correct me if I misspeak. So that's where the receptors are expressed. So in earlier content, I think it was uh, talking about uh, SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and I think I, I talked about dopamine. The way the nervous system works, and I'm going to say this in general, uh, it's a complex series of um, presynaptic neurons and postsynaptic neurons, uh, all um, connected or maybe connected is the wrong word, arranged, arranged in synapses. So a synapse is the um, a presynaptic neuron sitting in the proximity of a postsynaptic neuron. So you have a presynaptic terminal and you have a postsynaptic terminal. And when that presynaptic neuron gets activated, it typically releases a neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. That neurotransmitter uh, diffuses down to the postsynaptic neuron to a receptor that binds the receptor and that activates the postsynaptic neuron and then it goes on to uh, activate another neuron. So in this instance, if you look at this picture here, the opioid receptors are um, expressed on the membrane uh, in this instance of uh, um, of this post of this presynaptic neuron, not the post, the presynaptic neuron, the opioid receptor is a G protein coupled receptor. I think this might be the first time I talked about this, or I've talked about this class on uh, this channel. So a G protein coupled receptor um, in the cytosol. It, uh, it, it's, uh, it interacts with a G protein, which metabolizes, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, GTP, guanosine triphosphate to guanosine diphosphate, GDP, as, and, th and it, then it, it performs its function. So I'm not gonna, I'm not going to try to unpack everything in this cartoon because there are, um, as you can see, there are a number of things happening inside that presynaptic uh, terminal. But my research, in my research, I learned that the opioid receptors have an inhibitory function. So what they do is they tend to turn off these um, action potentials. They, they tend to turn off the signaling in general, uh, and they tend to have a, uh, a depressive and relaxing effect. I'm not saying depressive as in mental depression. I'm saying a depression of function. So in general, that's that's what they do, which is why when you take an opioid such as fentanyl or morphine or hydrocodone or oxycodone, that's how it makes you feel better. That's how. That's why you kind of, well, you go to sleep. I, it put me to sleep when I took um, hydrocodone because it's, it's exerting a depressive uh, function in terms of uh, metabolic activity. What I will say, for those of you who want to uh, indulge me in the uh, intracellular signaling and the, the signaling pathways in this cell, it seems that um, the influx of calcium causes it facilitates the release of the neurotransmitter into the synaptic uh, cleft. So in general, in terms of cells and how cells work and, and in terms of how tissues work, many processes are dependent upon the movement of ions in and out of cells and in and out of organelles within those cells. So in this instance, we're looking at the movement of calcium and we're looking at the movement of potassium. So uh, 
the movement of ions is very, very significant and important in our cellular processes and in our bodies. But in general, what I want you to take away from this is that the opioid receptors are G protein coupled receptors. And these receptors exert an inhibitory and a, a depressive action on uh, the nervous system. So I found this short piece here. I'm going to read this. This is very, very short. And uh, I think this talks about the crisis, the significance of it, and why it's so deadly. So this is from American University right here in the DMV. Uh, this was written by uh, Patty Hausman, and it was published on May 17th, 2023. It's entitled, To the Point, the fentanyl crisis, why now, why so deadly? Uh, and actually, this is based upon um, a question asked and then answered uh, by professor of uh, psychology, David Kearns at American University. Okay, I just had to, sometimes your mind gets uh, frozen and you're trying to find your words so the, this is this statement, this characterization, this summary is provided by him. Okay, so this says, uh, to the point, provides insights from American University faculty experts on timely questions covering current events, politics, business, culture, science, health, sports, and more. Each week we ask one professor just one critical question about what's on our minds. It's the deadliest drug crisis in U.S. history. More than 100,000 Americans died from drug overdoses between August 2021 and August 2022 alone, according to Foreign Affairs. Much of this epidemic is driven by fentanyl, which now kills around 200 Americans every day. So that's significant. Multiply 200 times 365 days. Multiply 200 people by 365 days. That's a lot of people. Most illicitly manufactured fentanyl and chemicals used to produce it comes from China or Mexico and the U.S. government has not been successful at stemming its flow into the country. It's become an epidemic that is endangering our national public health and destroying communities across the nation. We asked American University professor of psychology David Kearns to explain why fentanyl and other synthetic opioids are so addictive, so prevalent, and so dangerous. So that's something me and my mentor in our discussion, that's something we talked about. And that's that this fentanyl from other countries is coming into our country and uh, it's not really known how to stop it. And it's not really known in what form it's coming in. I think it might be coming in in generic drugs made from other countries. And I probably need to be careful about talking about this because I don't know how the YouTube uh, algorithm and those running YouTube are seeing this, but this is just for educational purposes only YouTube. This is just for educational purposes only. Okay. Let me finish this article up. This says, why is fentanyl so dangerous and how has it, how has its use spread across the nation so quickly? Fentanyl is one of a class of many drugs known as opioids, which are used for pain relief. They can also be addictive. The key way in which fentanyl differs from more familiar opioids like morphine, codeine, or even heroin is potency. 
potency refers only to the amount of a substance needed to produce a certain effect. Fentanyl is 100 times more potent than morphine. This means that if 10 milligrams of morphine is needed to produce pain relief, only one-tenth of one milligram of fentanyl is needed to produce the same effect. Few people have access to a scale sensitive enough to accurately measure amounts that small. Fentanyl can be so dangerous because small miscalculations in dose can result in a fatal overdose. Potency aside, fentanyl is not necessarily more dangerous than other opioids. Something many people do not realize is that fentanyl is used safely as part of routine medical procedures every day, but it is administered by trained professionals who can accurately administer the correct amount. Fentanyl is now, I'm sorry, fentanyl is not a new drug, which raises the question of why we are seeing record overdose deaths now. The story goes back to the late 1990s and the first of what the CDC calls the three waves of the opioid overdose epidemic. The first wave began with prescription pills like OxyContin. The second wave began around 2010 when prescription opioids became much harder to obtain and more expensive. Opioid users switched to heroin, which provides the same effect, but was much cheaper. Now we are in the third wave with fentanyl substituting for heroin. The reasons for this switch are not yet fully understood, but it is thought that in recent years, it has become much cheaper to produce illicit fentanyl than heroin for various reasons. There is uh, the bio for Professor David Kearns. I'm not gonna read over, um, I'm not gonna read this paragraph. I'm gonna leave uh, this link in the description box below. Hey, I'm in the DMV, maybe I'll get to talk to uh, Professor Kearns at some point and uh, do a one-on-one -on -one with him. You know, I'm doing pretty well here. I was able to say opioid correctly each time. I don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> so that's this piece. Again, this piece is going to be in the description box below. So all in searching for information on fentanyl and uh, opioids and the opioid receptor, I found this link from the uh, National Institutes of Health. Uh, this is from a, uh, a column. I think it's a column. It's called NIH Research Matters. It's entitled, How Opioid Drugs Activate Receptors. So I'm not going to read this, but I'm just going to, um, it had some cool pictures here that I thought my audience would enjoy looking at. Uh, this, this link will be in the description box below, but they show two images here and they used nanobodies in uh, cell lines, I believe. And they were able to show that when those cells, those cells or the cell line, they were able to show when those cells were treated with uh, an opiate, they were able to show activation of the uh, G proteins, I believe, within the cells. So I think that this that's what this is showing. It's either showing activation of the G proteins in the cells, or it's showing that there are opioid receptors within the cells themselves. But they're, I thought it was interesting because they're using nanobodies. I don't have um, experience with nanobodies myself, but they're using micro technology to, sh to show the uh, activation of these pathways. So I thought that would be interesting for my audience to see. And this link is in the description box below. I'm not going to read this in its entirety. 
So that's it, everyone. That is a short uh, discussion about fentanyl. Uh, that's a short discussion about what uh, opioids are, and that's a, a short discussion about the uh, opioid receptors. And actually, oh, before I wrap up, there are three. There, there are mu. Uh, geez, I, I wrote this down. I hope I wrote it down. Uh, mu, kappa, and gamma. Geez, let me look this up really quickly. I thought I wrote this down. I think it's mu, kappa, and delta. Let me let me look it up really really quickly. Yeah, so it's mu, kappa, and delta. Mu, kappa, and delta opioid receptors. And there may be more, but those are the three main opioid receptors. All right, everyone, please let me know uh, if you learned something here. Please let me know um, if you have questions or comments in the comment section below. This is Big Discussions 76, Science and Technology. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar. Please like, share, and subscribe. And please, well, consider subscribing, especially if you're new. If you want to make a donation to the channel, that information is below in the description box. And also, please consider joining the Big Words LLC newsletter. In addition to being a YouTube content creator, I'm also a writer with two blogs and a book project on the way. So with that, everyone, I'm going to uh, wrap up. And I think another take home message from this is if you're not getting your drugs or your pharmaceuticals from a reputable source, if you're not getting them from CVS or Rite Aid or Walgreens, if you're getting your drugs on the black market somehow, uh, beware because you might not know what's in those drugs. So I, I think that's Maybe that's something I should have said at the beginning of this video, but beware of what's in your medications if they're not coming from sources that are regulated and um, reputable and trusted. All right. As always, remember, everyone, that your attitude determines your altitude. Always try to do your best. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.